Many times you can like hear this gospel and, and kind of wonder, have a question, like, like why was Jesus sleeping? I mean, like how was Jesus sleeping? I mean, this is a boat that's literally water is, you know, already filling up, rain is coming on, like he's getting soaked, his cushion that he's sleeping on is already wet. Like, why is Jesus sleeping? It's actually not the question we should ask. The question we should ask ourselves is, why aren't the apostles sleeping? Why aren't the apostles sleeping? If Jesus isn't worried about the storm, why are the apostles worried about it? If Jesus is sleeping through this storm, why aren't the apostles? You see, Jesus is never affected or moved or shaken by anything that's going on around him. The external circumstances of life have no ability to shake his confidence and love that he has in the Father and the plan that the Father has for his life. He is not controlled or moved or shaken by anything. And even in the midst of a storm, he can sleep. Now, Jesus has called these 12 men who are going to be the apostles, the foundation to which he shall build his church, and he's going to send these apostles out, these disciples, to go make other disciples. These are going to be the men that are going to proclaim the good news, to cast out, to heal, to allow the salvation that Jesus won upon the cross to be given to the entire world. And sometimes the Lord Jesus has to allow storms to happen for a few reasons. One, he needs to make sure that these apostles know who he is. They know the one and the power of the one that they are following. Even in this, we see really quickly that the apostles really didn't like know Jesus. They didn't fully know who he was. Like they knew enough that Jesus like could do something, right? That's why they like went to him. But even after Jesus gets up, rebukes the wind, says be still, be quiet to the sea, All of a sudden, they are in awe, and they're like, who is this? That even the winds and the waves obey. So even then, they didn't fully believe and know the one that they were following. Oh, and Jesus must make sure that they fully know the one that they are going to give their lives to. And two... Jesus even gives them an example of the type of life and response that they are supposed to have in the midst of the storms that they will encounter. You see, their faith must be built completely and fully upon Jesus Christ and nothing and no one else because there will be more storms that the apostles will have to face. There will be more attacks from the evil one that the apostles will have to face. And the Lord Jesus must form these disciples to be fully and rooted upon him that no other external or circumstances in their life shake their faith from Jesus. Now, Jesus is very kind and he's very patient. Because obviously we see in this situation they did not act like Jesus. Instead of actually having faith in the one that they were with, that if he is sleeping, I can sleep, they actually instead moved like the evil one. The storms that were happening 
began to affect them so much that they began to move and operate like the evil one himself. You see, the evil one, Satan, his name means accuser. And that's what the apostles did. They went right to Jesus and they accused him of not caring. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Like seriously, you're sleeping right now, do you not care? Do you not? Like did you not call us and here you're just gonna leave us to die? Obviously you don't care. They accused Jesus pretty harsh by the way like they legit reproached Jesus and they made this assumption and judgment and accused him of not caring about them I think about my own times where I have done the same The Lord will allow storms in our lives because he does not want our faith built upon anything other than him. And sometimes he will allow storms in our lives to reveal that our faith isn't in Jesus. That we're still controlled by things of the world, fears, doubts, anxieties. And even in the midst, the Lord may allow even the evil one. You see, any time there's something going on, the evil one wants to get his hand within it because he wants to be able for the storm, right? He even wants the storm to rage more because the evil one wants the storm, which is out here. He wants the storm to get inside of us. And he wants the darkness, the fear, the anxiety, the difficulty, the doubt to enter inside of us, into our minds, into our hearts so that we can begin to move and operate like him. That we can move and operate and begin to not trust in the Lord. That he isn't good. That we can begin to accuse. When storms rise up, our first movement is to accuse and to doubt and to become angry. And potentially what he desires is that we will leave the Lord. That we'll jump off the boat. The idea that it is going to be much safer outside of the boat than it would be inside the boat with Jesus. And that is not the faith that Jesus Christ suffered and died for. And that is not the faith of the apostles or the disciples that he called and created. But a faith to be built completely and fully upon Jesus Christ. That nothing that may happen in the midst of the world, the circumstances of life, the sufferings and tragedies, have an ability to begin to shake our faith in him. That we don't move like the world moves, but we move by his power and his spirit in every single situation. You see, Jesus wants disciples to make disciples by the power of his spirit that are able to sleep in storms and not to accuse in storms. That are able to be so fully fixed on the goodness and the love of God that they can surrender their life in the midst of that and not be shaken by it. And thanks be to God that he is patient with us. I am not fully there. And you see, God who loves us so much, he desires the faith that he has given us, a gift that he has given us in our baptism to be built up, to grow, to be strong. And I'll tell you right now, your faith does not become strong unless you are in situations where you have to be faithful. If there were no storms in life, you have no opportunity to actually trust God. You have no opportunity to begin to actually live in faith and actually, do I really believe that he's good? Will I actually give my life or will I choose to trust in someone, something, or myself other than God and choose to put my faith in that? And you see, this is what happens, my brothers and sisters, when we begin to put our faith in something other than God, your, uh, your life will go up and down just like the world does. I'm doing good today, doing bad tomorrow, doing good today, I'm bad, I'm great 10 minutes ago, something happened, I'm horrible now. That is not, that's not the Christian life, that's not the Christian faith. My faith is based upon Jesus Christ, and if he's good, I need to be good. And if he ain't worried, I need not be worried. And it's a challenge, absolutely, it's an extreme challenge. But that's the faith that Jesus Christ is calling every single disciple towards. 
to have a faith completely and fully in him. And one of the things in the midst of a lot of the sufferings that I've encountered, and even a lot of the ways, my brothers and sisters, where I have been an accuser of the Lord, where in the midst of my darkness and my difficulties, I have accused and said those things to the Lord, where I've been like, do you not care? I've been suffering for so long. Have you abandoned me? I've given in to particular lies and doubts and darkness. And I have at times actually walked away from the Lord, right? And thanks be to God that he's merciful. But the call still remains the same. That if I am to follow Jesus, my faith must be firm and rooted within him. And one of the truths, my brothers and sisters, that the God has continually taught me and where I've had to step back in the midst of the storm and to begin to remind and to speak over my life in that is this. Is that... This is not the first time that God has seen this storm. It's the first time that I've seen it, but it's not the first time that God has seen it. You see, this truth is that God himself has already gone ahead of me. He has seen my life. He has seen all the ways and the areas, any pitfalls, attacks of the evil one. He's seen my weakness. He's seen my difficulty, my brokenness. God right now already has answers to problems that I don't even know exist yet. He's already shutting doors that need to be shut, and he's opening them that need to be shut. He's already making ways where I don't even know there needs to be a way. He's seen it already. It's the first time that maybe I'm experiencing this storm, but it's not the first time that he's experiencing it. And if he's experienced it, that means he has a plan in it. And you see, everything, my brothers and sisters, that happens, happens under his will, his control. Either he chooses to allow it to happen, or he fully wants it to happen. Because not everything that happens is what he wants. But if he allows it to happen, the promise is that he will draw some good out of it. That's the promise, because he is sovereign, he is Lord, he is more powerful than the elemental realities of the world and the darkness of the evil one. That he has the power to utilize every single circumstance, that even a storm can have purpose for the glory of God and our freedom in the midst of the world to the Christian life. That in all things, the Lord says, in all things, he shall draw good. For those who love them, who are called according to his purpose. And the interesting part, here's the truth that has assisted me. Not the truth of the fact that he's seen this before, that he's gone before me. The truth that he's seen this. But a truth that in this moment, what is the goodness? Right, God draws good from all things. What's the goodness? You see, sometimes we can become frustrated because I want my goodness. I want God to draw goodness that I want it to look like and I want it to be. It's not based on your goodness. The goodness that God draws is based on his goodness. And the question is, what is the goodness in the midst of a storm that God will draw from it? That's the next verse. Romans 8, 29, which says, Those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. To be conformed to the image of his son. The goodness that God desires to draw out of any storm, anything that may be happening, is to literally make you like Jesus. To make you speak, to make you act, and to make you have the faith like Jesus. That you can begin to sleep in the midst of a storm and not be overtaken by it. Why? Because my brothers and sisters, we are in the midst of the world where there is persecution, there is hatred, there is evil. We have an enemy and everything in the midst of the world and the enemy wants to be able to shake our faith, to get us to reject the Lord Jesus To not stand firm on the foundation which is Christ himself. And the Lord is like, oh, no, 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 no. I died for you. You're so important to me. I died for you. I have given you my spirit. I have not given you my spirit to abandon you in the storm. I have given you my spirit. It's not a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power, love, and self-control. It is a spirit of God himself to form you, to conform you like Jesus, to be faithful, to allow your faith to be built greater and greater strength. Because we do move in the midst of the world, and there are tragedies and difficulties and sufferings that we will endure physically, emotionally, spiritually. And yet I must live my truth, we must live our truth as disciples, that even as Jesus says, yes, in the world you will have trouble, but you are to take courage, take faith in me, 
because I have overcome the world. Greater is he who is in you than greater than he who is in the world. That we follow a God, the God of all the universe, who even the winds and the waves still obey. And he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And that purpose is to be conformed to Jesus, to be able to sleep in storms but not be overtaken by them, to not move in accusation and doubt and fear and anger and frustration, to not allow the, the external and the circumstances of life to begin to take us on a roller coaster. It's not a roller coaster. That's not the Christian life. Even in the midst of suffering and difficulty, by the power and the faith that God has given us, we remain strong within him. That we look to the cross, that we find confidence in the Lord Jesus. Lord, you have seen this. You have a plan for this. I may not even understand it. There are, trust, there are many times in your Christian faith where you will not understand what the Lord is doing. Welcome to faith. I was talking to people yesterday and I said a lot of times in the Christian life, it's really not a crisis of faith. It's really a crisis of understanding. Like we just want to know. Like again, do you not care? Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you sleeping? You should get up and do something about this. Do you not care? I don't understand why you're sleeping. Lord's like, I'm, don't worry about why. Sleep. Sometimes we're not going to understand. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Welcome to the Christian life. And praise be Jesus Christ. And we follow. My brothers and sisters, we are to move and to live without fear in the midst of the world that Jesus Christ has conquered. And the Lord may allow certain storms in our lives to strengthen us. One, to possibly reveal that, wow, my faith really isn't in Jesus. Okay, Lord, I want to repent of that. I want to begin again. And I want my faith to be built upon you. He'll allow sometimes a storm in the midst of our life to form us, to conform us, to be like Jesus, to build up our faith, to begin to move and operate by the power of his spirit, to not be shaken by the things of the world. And you see, a reason for this is this. Anyone that can sleep through a storm has authority over the storm. I'm going to say that again. Anyone who can sleep through a storm has authority over the storm. And Jesus doesn't want just to conform you to himself. He also wants you to move and operate in his authority by the faith that he has given you. To, in his name, begin to move in faith and even rebuke in his name the things that are contrary to the Lord. To move and operate in his power and authority. But the authority does not come first. Sleeping and trusting does. Then the authority follows. The Lord wants us to begin to rest in him in his love, in his goodness, that he has a plan. My brothers and sisters, he literally died for you. You are worth the blood of Jesus. He's not giving up on you. He's not abandoning you. He's not going to let you, just want to let you die. That's not what he's doing. That's not who he is. If he wanted you to die, he wouldn't have died for you. I mean, this is literally the perpetual reality that God is for you in every single moment. And if God is allowing something, he's allowing it for your good. He's allowing it to be able to conform you to his son to have greater faith. Because, yeah, we live in the midst of a world that will want to shake our faith. But I'm not living for this world. You're not living for this world. We're living for eternity. We're living for heaven. And our faith has been standing firm upon Jesus Christ. That I got a place written in heaven. And you know what? If you want to kill this moral body, do it. Fine. We'll raise it up on the last day. I'm not going to be controlled by you. I'm not going to be controlled by the fears and the anxieties in the midst of the world. Because I'm not living for the world. I'm living for the Lord. And that's what Jesus is calling us to. Is to live for him in all things. And every day in the midst of our lives, the Lord is calling us, will you trust me? Will you surrender your life to me? Will you trust more in me than in yourself? Will you trust more in me than in these circumstances of your life? Whatever they may be. My brothers and sisters, what is that thing, you know, that God wants to draw good out of? What is the thing in your life? What's the storm in your life? called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We have not been abandoned. We have not been forsaken. But our Lord Jesus is with us in every single moment. 
And he desires by the power of his spirit for us to live in that truth every single day. To not be conformed to this world. To not be conformed to the doubts, the discouragements, the despair, the darkness, the lies of the evil one. But to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ who fully put his trust in the Father, in the plan of the Father. So too, my brothers and sisters, we must surrender our life to the Lord Jesus in greater measure than ever before. We must place our trust that he is drawing good and he has a work that he is doing right now, that he has a plan and a purpose for you, and he's working that out. Continue to trust. Do not walk away. Do not jump ship. Be faithful to the Lord. If you find yourself in that difficulty where maybe the, maybe the actual like, storm itself has gotten inside of you and you have been ap- operating and acting in ways that are contrary to the Christian life because the storm has overtaken you, then maybe we need the Lord Jesus to quiet that. To quiet that. Either through the gift of confession, if we need that. To ask the Lord through his mercy to enter into my soul and to begin to forgive and to free and to quiet those areas in my life that I have allowed in. Even now, we were able to receive the gift of the Eucharist of being able to ask the Lord, Lord, say, be quiet, be still to this area in my heart that I am not trusting you. And then to actually say, Jesus, I trust you. I will give my life to you. I want to build my faith upon you and nothing else. Jesus will be inside of you. The body and blood of Jesus inside of you. And it's a way to be able to ask in his name to calm that storm, but to recommit your life to him, to build your faith upon him. So that nothing that happens in the midst of this world will shake your faith. That your faith will be built on solid rock. That when the winds, when the waves come, you will not be shaken. Because if he's not shaken, we're not to be shaken. And if he has the victory, we have the victory. That's the gift of being sons and daughters and disciples of the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.